in its heyday, being the world's second largest economy, capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the United States, the communist big brother, the Soviet Union, disintegrated and fell. Why did this happen? If this is your first time tuning into our channel, the primary focus here is to provide critical perspectives on historical or societal controversial events, offering insightful descriptions and commentary. If you're interested, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning on the notification bell. Let's get started. Introduction to the Soviet Union In the early 1990s, the Soviet Union was the largest country in the world, a status that remains unmatched to this day. It occupied approximately one-sixth of the Earth's land area and had a population exceeding 290 million, comprising over 100 different ethnic groups. During that time, the military power of the Soviet Union was at its zenith, possessing tens of thousands of nuclear weapons. Its sphere of influence extended throughout Eastern Europe through the military alliance of communist countries known as the Warsaw Pact Organization. However, just one year later, on Christmas Day in 1991, the communist big brother, the Soviet Union, officially disintegrated and exited the stage of history. So, why did such a colossal global superpower collapse? During the process of the Soviet Union's collapse, there were inevitably various external and internal factors at play. To keep the video from becoming too lengthy, we will omit the discussion of events like the 1989 Eastern European democratization and the secondary external factors such as the US-Soviet Cold War. Instead, we will focus on four major internal core issues in politics, economics, military, and society that directly led to the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Political factors. Firstly, let's look at the political factors. When Mikhail Gorbachev took office as the General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party on March 11, 1985, his primary domestic goals were to rescue the ailing Soviet economy and reform the cumbersome government bureaucracy. Initially, he introduced policies of Glasnost and Perestroika, the former aimed to promote dialogue, while the latter introduced market-oriented policies to state-owned enterprises. It became evident that these reforms did not yield significant results or achieve the intended revival of the Communist Party. However, the Glasnost policy opened the door to criticism of the Communist Party establishment, leading to a loss of control over the media and public discourse. Calls for democratic reforms began to rise throughout the country. The economic reform of the time also exposed the worst aspects of both capitalist and communist systems. This was partly due to the elimination of certain price controls in the market, while bureaucratic systems remained in place. This allowed Communist Party officials to resist policies or market conditions that did not serve their personal interests. Both policy directions accelerated the demise of the Soviet Union. In summary, Gorbachev's domestic reforms failed, and at the same time, he abandoned the policy of Brezhnev doctrine, taking a softer approach towards other communist allies. By 1989, the dramatic events in Eastern Europe, including the fall of the Berlin Wall, Hungary, Poland, and the gradual independence of the Baltic states within the Soviet Union, ultimately sealed the fate of the Soviet Union. Economic factors Next, let's delve into the economic factors. According to current public data, in 1989, the Soviet Union was the world's second largest economy. However, shortages of basic necessities were a common occurrence, and at the same time, people would hoard and engage in black market activities. It is estimated that the Soviet Union's black market economy was equivalent to 10% or more of the nation's official GDP. For years, economic issues had plagued the entire country, and Mikhail Gorbachev's economic reform policies exacerbated these problems. Wage levels rallied on printing more money to support them, but this also exacerbated inflation. Incorrect economic policies made the country more vulnerable to external factors. For instance, when oil prices sharply declined, it pushed the Soviet economy into crisis. In the 1970s and 1980s, the Soviet Union was one of the world's largest energy-producing nations, with oil and natural gas exports supporting the world's largest planned economy at the time. However, when oil prices plummeted from $120 to $24 per barrel in March 1986, this lifeline that sustained the Soviet economy through foreign exchange earnings was severed. Despite a temporary rise in oil prices after Iraq's invasion of Kuwait in 1990, by that time, the collapse of the Soviet Union had already begun. Military factors Thirdly, let's discuss the military factors. It is commonly believed that the Soviet Union's defense spending surged in response to the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, proposed by the 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. In fact, military budgets in the Soviet Union had been on the rise since the early 1970s. Estimates of the Soviet Union's military expenditure as a percentage of GDP ranged from 10% to 20%. However, it is challenging to pinpoint an exact figure, even within the Soviet Union, 
due to conflicts of interest among various government departments involved in military spending. What can be affirmed is that the Soviet Union's military spending was not correlated with its overall economic condition. Despite economic shortcomings, the military always had ample funding, often prioritizing military research and talent. As a result, the technical talent and potential entrepreneurs who could have supported Gorbachev's transition to a market economy were often attracted to the military-industrial complex. Disproportionate military spending and the concentration of talent in the defense industry hindered economic development and reform efforts in the Soviet Union. In addition to these factors, the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989 was a critical military factor contributing to its disintegration. The Soviet military, known for its bravery after defeating Hitler, successfully suppressing the Hungarian Revolution and the Prague Spring, faced insurmountable challenges in Afghanistan, often referred to as the Empire's Graveyard. Despite their well-equipped forces, the Soviet military struggled against Afghan insurgents. Over a million Soviet troops were deployed over a decade, resulting in 15,000 casualties and over a million Afghan civilians killed. Just like many other communist regimes, as long as the government could control the media, criticism of the Afghan war remained suppressed. However, Gorbachev's glasnost policy opened a crack for criticism and anti-war sentiments. Within Gorbachev's reform, one of the most significant impediments was resistance from the military, but the stalemate in Afghanistan diminished their influence. Simultaneously, growing disillusionment among Soviet soldiers of Central Asian descent due to ethnic and religious factors contributed to war weariness. The Baltic republics in Eastern Europe, having observed their own history of Russian occupation, saw Moscow's disintegration, and Ukraine erupted in anti-war protests. This situation fueled uncontrolled separatist movements, ultimately leading to Lithuania declaring independence in 1990, triggering a domino effect as other republics followed suit. The invasion of Afghanistan is considered a major failure of Soviet foreign policy, and it contributed to the multifaceted decline of the Soviet Union. Social factors. Lastly, let's explore the social factors. On January 31, 1990, the first McDonald's restaurant opened in Moscow, and Soviet citizens lined up eagerly to taste the Big Mac, marking the arrival of American fast food culture on the Soviet turf. This seemed to symbolize the victory of Western capitalism. Similar scenes were witnessed in the waning days of the Soviet Union. Muscovites would queue up early in the morning to get their hands on liberal newspapers. People were eager to explore new concepts, ideas and experiences. At the very least, they wanted to experience the taste of a market economy through American fast food. In fact, in the early 1980s, there was a growing discontent within Soviet society regarding the widespread corruption in the Soviet communist states. Some communist party members also hoped for change. When Gorbachev came to power in 1985, he aimed to eventually renew the social contract between the Soviet regime and the people through reform, prolonging the life of the communist regime. However, it was already too late. People who had experienced limited freedoms and the crumbling credibility of the Soviet communist regime found it impossible to repair the relationship. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster served as the final straw. While you might think this relates to the military and economic factors stemming from the Soviet-American Cold War, it was actually a civilian nuclear power plant accident that affected human lives. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster in Ukraine, which occurred on April 26, 1986, was the most severe level 7 nuclear accident in human history. The radioactive fallout from the disaster was over 400 times more severe than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The radiation contamination spread rapidly to neighboring countries. Gorbachev, who had been in power for just over a year at the time, faced a challenge in managing the aftermath of this catastrophe. The usual machinery of communist party states responded swiftly to the disaster by sealing off all information related to it. They even ordered May Day parades and celebrations to proceed as scheduled in the affected areas, disregarding people's safety. Soviet officials initially dismissed foreign reports as baseless rumors. It was only 18 days after the disaster that Gorbachev issued an official statement describing the Chernobyl event as an unfortunate incident and referring to Western media reports as extremely unethical and malicious lies. As time passed, the Communist Party's propaganda began to diverge further from the reality experienced by people living in the contaminated areas. The last remaining shreds of mutual trust between the people and the Soviet communist regime were almost completely shattered. Decades later, Gorbachev once said on the anniversary of the disaster, compared to the reform policies I implemented, the Chernobyl story may have been the true reason for the Soviet Union's collapse five years later. In reality, these four factors are interconnected, and known is more lethal than the other. Each played a crucial role in the overall picture, and all were essential in the eventual downfall of the Soviet Union. That concludes today's video. For the sake of YouTube's algorithm or any additional information you may have,
please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below, or simply leave the message the fall of the USSR. Your supports mean a lot if you want to continue supporting this channel. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any episodes. Lastly, if being radical is the new norm, and objectivity is considered heretical, perhaps we should be radically objective. Until next time, stay curious and stay unconventional.